If you're charged with retail fraud in the state of Michigan, uh, you're facing a very serious crime, a crime that could be a felony or a misdemeanor. Uh, the most serious offense is a first degree retail fraud, which is a felony. It means the value of the items are over $1,000. Uh, third and second degree retail fraud or misdemeanors, depending upon the value, if it's under $200, it's a third degree. If it's between uh, $200 and $1,000, it's a second degree. All three offenses are considered crimes of theft, dishonesty, and fraud. I work with a number of clients who are, are doctors, who are lawyers, accountants, uh, nurses, school teachers. Uh, just about every profession can be impacted by a retail fraud offense. Clients contact me, and usually it's a first offender. Um, they tell me that they were in Target, Walmart, Meyer, uh, J.C. Penney, Nordstrom's. Um, a number of stores uh, are very, very protective of the items that are sold there. And clients contact me and say, I've never been in trouble. Uh, I was sort of stopped at the door, or, or uh, they, they came up to me in the store and they brought me into a room and they made me sign statements. They took my pictures, the worst moment of my life. And what I tell clients is exactly it, it's the worst moment in your life, but it's over. Um, that's behind us. We're going to move forward in a positive direction. What I do for all of my clients is I put my clients on a proactive program from day one. Um, when you're charged with retail fraud in Michigan, uh, the prosecutor, the judge, the police department, and your community are labeling you a criminal, someone who steals, uh, someone who cannot control themselves when they walk into a store and take other people's property. Now you're saying, Jonathan, that's not who I am. And a lot of times clients, when they contact me, they say, Jonathan, I have a great job. I have a family. I live in a nice house. I know my family has money. It's something stupid that I did, and I didn't need to do it. I tell my client, okay. Uh, not all clients you know, who contact me usually tell me these stories, and I say, you know, we need to show true actions uh, rather than just words. So what do we do from day one is we demonstrate to the prosecutor and the judge who you really are, demonstrating that you're a good person who found themselves in an isolated moment in time someone who used poor judgment, but going forward is not going to do this again. If we can convince the judge and prosecutor that this was isolated and you're going to learn from it, we can potentially keep it off of your record. Well, how do we do this? Uh, from day one, we're doing community service. We're showing in the community that you're a positive person. You're more than just the thief who steals from stores. Uh, we find an organization that's a good fit for you. We accumulate hours. We go to court. We tell the prosecutor and the judge you've done X amount of community service hours. And that kind of begins to turn around the process of you being a negative person in the community. We also do is we add support groups, uh, classes uh, into our program. allows you to speak to others who have been charged with a similar offense. It's kind of like an AA meeting. It allows us to go in front of a judge and say, Judge, not only did I tell my client about the consequences if this ever happens again, but they actually went out and met people and were told face to face the consequences if this ever happens again. We like to add in an educational component that allows my client to explore why this happened. Uh, on my website, I talk about different reasons why people steal. And you may not know why you did it right now, but uh, from reviewing my website and doing a little bit of research, I think you're going to understand why this happened. Once we understand the source of the problem, we can better tackle it. Uh, a lot of my clients will also see a counselor. It's always good to get a medical professional involved to tell a judge and prosecutor um, that your healthy mind, healthy body, and going forward you're going to make better choices. And if there's any stresses in your life, you're going to tackle those stresses in other manners other than stealing from a store. Uh, so if you're charged with retail fraud, uh, I'd like to hear more about your case. I'd like to hear about your job, your responsibilities. Uh, we need to plan from day one how we're going to avoid the ultimate consequence of a retail fraud crime, and that's going to jail, losing your job, and having a criminal record. If you're willing to work hard, and I'm very selective in the clients that I take on for retail fraud classes, if you're willing to work hard, I am willing to help you. Looking for motivated clients who are willing to sprint from day one in order to avoid the marathon. That marathon would include a criminal record. That marathon would could include going to jail and losing your job. So there's a lot at stake here. Uh, I know you're anxious. I, I know you want to scream on the top of your lungs that you're not a criminal. You're, you're better than that. Uh, I can give you the tools to do that. I look forward to helping you. I look forward to helping you achieve your goals. And I look forward to talking to you. The 42nd District Court has two divisions. The courts are located in Romeo and New Baltimore. The judges at the 42nd District Court are the Honorable James M. Biernat, Dennis Leduc, and William H. Hackle. The most common prosecutors at the 42nd District Court are the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office, the City of Romeo and New Baltimore and the Townships of Chesterfield and Lenox.
The majority of the arrests at the 42nd District Court are made by Michigan State Police, the Macomb County Sheriff, the City of Romeo and New Baltimore, and the Township of Chesterfield. For this court, some cases will begin with an active warrant for the arrest of the defendant, while other cases will have an arraignment date for the defendant to appear before the court for bond to be set, and the case to begin. With an attorney on your case, it's very likely that this court would allow the arraignment to be waived, and a pre-trial to be set in the future, if the court insists on an active warrant, you would simply arrange to go with your attorney. With the arraignment, and or the warrant now in the past, it's time to gather every piece of information about your case. This is done with the discovery process, and your attorney, works with the prosecutor, and police to obtain all evidence. Now that we better understand the strengths, and weaknesses of the case, it's time to create leverage using our out-of-court proactive approach, along with the contents of the case itself. In order to obtain the best result in your case, a decision must be made between resolution with the prosecution, and a strong focus on obtaining the best sentence from the court, or setting the matter for a pre-trial motion, or trial. Macomb County is a good county to work in. The judges, prosecutors and probation are open-minded, and really have embraced my proactive program with my clients. Some of my clients have received no probation, avoided jail and been praised in open court. I have also found all of the prosecutors to be easy to work with, they are open to second chances, and better understanding how my client ended up on the wrong side of the law, we can change their perception of the case by being proactive from day one. If you or someone in your life is charged with a crime at this court, send me an email, or give me a call. I've written numerous books, and I've been on both sides of the type of case you're charged with, both as a prosecutor, and defense lawyer, I spent years as a prosecutor and I switched to the defense side, because I saw too many good, hard-working folks who are not criminals, but rather good-hearted and responsible people, but in the moment end up on the wrong side of the law. I worked with thousands of defense lawyers that were not humanizing their clients, or giving them an opportunity to change the perception of who they are, someone charged with a crime should not solely be judged on that one moment in time. I really enjoy helping people turn a negative experience into a moment of growth and opportunity. We cannot change the past but we do control the present, and the future. If you're open to hard work, and a second chance, I look forward to helping.